King Alfred the Great Along the road from Taunton to Glastonbury, across the Somerset levels, you pass a small hill with a little monument. It does not look important, but something happened here that shaped the way we live today. The place is called Athelney. January 878 Saxon King Alfred was resting at his fortress at Chippenham. Suddenly, the Viking army of Guthrum launched a surprise attack, breaking through the defences and killing everyone. All was lost. Now the very last of the Saxon kingdoms had fallen to the fierce Viking invaders. And that is why we speak Danish, not English, and why Danish has become the international language throughout the whole world. Right? No. Oh, you speak English, not Danish. So, what happened then? What happened was King Alfred managed to escape. He slipped away to a secret hiding place, where he built a fortress and gathered a new army. Athelney was a small hill, an island in the middle of the treacherous swamps of the Somerset Levels. Today, behind the churchyard nearby at the village of Ling, you can just make out the remains of the earthen ramparts of this part of King Alfred's fortress. The fortifications at Ling were linked to those of Athelney by a causeway. In those days, the Somerset levels had not been drained, and the swampy marshland stretched for miles. Athelney is at the point where the River Tone drains into the River Parrot before flowing out to sea. This was a desperate time for Alfred. Everything was lost. If Guthrum found him, he would be killed, slowly and painfully. There is a story of Alfred seeking shelter in the home of a poor peasant woman. He was asked to watch the wheat cakes as they cooked by the fire. She had no idea that he was her king. Alfred was so worried and distracted that he let the cakes burn, and the woman told him off. Humbly, King Alfred said sorry and promised to take better care next time. It was his lowest point. King Alfred, like most Saxons at the time, was a Christian. He would have been praying desperately for God to rescue him and his kingdom from the Vikings. One of the nearest churches was here at Alla, near Alfred's hunting lodge. Alfred knew this place well and probably came here to pray. But Alfred did more than just pray. When Time Team dug here, they found the remains of iron smelting all over Athelney's little hill, where Alfred's men forged new weapons. The king's messengers travelled across the West Country to prepare Alfred's loyal people for the coming battle. By Whitsuntide 878, the signal was given. Meet at Egbert's Stone in the great forest of Selwood. Men gathered from across Somerset, Hampshire and Wiltshire. They cheered wildly as they saw their king walk among them, and Alfred led them to victory at the Battle of Eddington. One of the terms of surrender was that Guthrum convert to Christianity. Three weeks later, the Danish king and twenty-nine of his chief men travelled to the little church at Alla, the very place where Alfred had probably been praying when everything was lost. There they were baptised, 
with Alfred receiving Guthrum as his own spiritual son. This led to Vikings living in England becoming Christians. In time, a lasting peace treaty was agreed, with the Vikings settling to live in Danelaw in the northeast and Alfred ruling over the rest. You can still tell where the Vikings settled today. Viking place names end with Thorpe, Thwaite, Ness and B. Names like Scunthorpe, Whitby and Skegness. Saxon place names end with Ton, Ford, Ham and Hurst. Names like Taunton, North Petherton, High Ham and Lindhurst. Eventually, the whole of England was united under the rule of King Alfred's grandson. And the English language that we speak today? This began and developed from the Old English spoken by the Anglo-Saxons. <laughs>